Go to KTPQ. Kind of like a bit of orange. Hey guys, um, gotta get that hey guys in there within the 30, first 30 seconds. Um, YouTube algorithm. I look better. That's what I guess. Um, today in this vlog, I'm gonna be changing the toilet seats in our toilet. Um, as you can see, they're a bit askew. Um, bit loose. And they kind of allowed. I'm changing them for some soft. Got the Dominic soft closed toilet and a Kato quick release soft closed. Um, went into Reese yesterday. Um, big story. And my wife were out. Um, we're going to my mum and dad's 50th wedding anniversary. We thought we'd stop by Reese, um, pick up some toilet seats as I saw these. Um, it looked like a good idea. So I measured up our toilet, got the measurements down. The guys gave me these two to try out. I mean, it's good when you know the people that, you're, the people that you get from that you can maybe get some good stuff done. So um, I'll be seeing which one is better. And I'll be showing you how to take off and put on a new toilet seat. Um, first of all, I'll just show you how the toilet seats are usually are connected. I mean, some people don't even know this, so this is a good thing for you guys to know. Um, it's kind of a lot of hard work. you got to be down on, your ground, down on the ground. Bad for your hips, but <clears throat> I suppose you can go on your back as well. But um, if you look here... That little screw here, that there, that's all you need to do is undo that and then the seat should just lift up. So I'll undo that now. It's just done finger tight, um, no tools really necessarily required. As you can see, I was able to take that off pretty simple. I'll keep that just in case I need it again. Oh, there's that bit done. And now I'll do this side. Something this side now. Take that washer with it. It's to the end, that's where it just doesn't make this one in And get that one done there. Okay. And now, we should be able to just lift it up. I'll see if I can get a good view from here of me lifting the toilet off. Let's see, oh, it's a bit blurry. Okay. So it should be just lift it off just like that. Ugh. I suggest you give it a bit of a clean before you put the new one on. Um, so I'll basically do that now. <coughs> Don't know if you have these in another part of the world, but we have some toilet cleaning wipes. So we'll just use this to clean up around where that was because it's a bit dirty. Use one, and the biodegradable so you can flush them down the toilet. But it's always good to have a nice clean surface for what you're working on. Um, just makes things a bit easier. Push that out.
press it down. There you go. So we can put a bit better now. A bit more cleaner. Um, so the first thing I'll do is the Kato. Um, I had a look at this in store. It was okay looking. Um, I thought I'd bring it home to see if it fits. I mean, some of the measurements look a bit bigger, but you can't really know until you try it. So you got this is basically bolted in. You got your connections there. And your, your seat here. Just sit there. Connection holes there. So I'm not going to take it out of the plastic in case I don't need it. But I'm going to go try and see what fits. So I've just been in. They're trying to match these holes up to what's in the tub, on the toilet. Don't match up, these are more in, and they're a bit more out. So hopefully the posh ones can have the right length. But like I said, we did measure, had a look at the dimensions that I had. So it should fit, hopefully. Um, if not, I may be in a bit of trouble. It's not hope. I get into trouble. So I can return this back to Reese if I haven't used it. In some good conditions. Just gonna go grab a knife. Back with the knife, um Stanley Craft knife, um razor blade, whatever you guys call these. I've got a safety knife. It's got a safety lock, so you're not gonna shoot more than you need. Basically, you just need that much sticking out. This way, um, if you're even working in a warehouse, you have that much out. It's enough to go through the tape, but not cut the product underneath. Um, sometimes you don't want to cut the product underneath because, say, you're going to have a box with um, furniture for display. You scratch it. what this one looks like. <coughs> this is Dominique's soft pro seat. Um, <coughs> look like that. Everything in a bag. I guess I'll take it out and try it on. When you guarantee if it fits, hopefully it does. So, I'm going to try it. Okay, so I've tried this one. It's also, the holes are kind of off, so I'm going to have a look at something just to see what is required.
Because we don't really have anything. So I guess these were soft. No, you got your screw on screw on this. No, you soft mechanism. Just trying to have a look to see if there's a way I can get it to work without it lining up. There should be instructions somewhere of how to do it. So 121. Mm. This is kind of boring, I know. It's just me trying to figure out how things what things do, what it does. I'm gonna just finish this here for now. Come back. So I gave you an update. Um, I've read through the instructions, trying to read the instructions, but I've gone up to the stage here. I'm on these little blue tabs. Take them off. Screw them in. Um, so I found out that you can adjust those ones to match. So you put in these white little things here. And you pull it up, push it down, pull them apart, break them off, um, and then you can use that to adjust to match the holes on here, so you don't have to match up the holes. Accordingly, you just do that. Um, yeah, so I'm basically just going to be putting the seat on now, trying to adjust it to the right thing. I should get you guys to maybe watch me try and fail with it. It could be a funny watch. Good position. Position won't fall off as well because no matter where I put it, it seems like it's going to fall off. Guess that's the best position there. Grab a new foot, see? I'm going to try and match it up with the things. So as you can see, it closes very slowly. Um, this one makes it a soft close mechanism. And it still 
kind of off. So I just need to adjust that a bit. Take these off now. Oh. And like once it's done, you can try to turn it up. Okay, you need to tighten it up. <coughs> tighten it up this way. Not really. Get away, take it off. Like the machine is. There we go. Okay. Turn these up. Say do not force it, just get it close the cell. Um, so I'm just going to close the cell if I can try and adjust it. If need be. That looks like it's going to be alright. Also, self closes as well. It's me, it's changing the um, toilet seat. Hope you enjoyed that. I'll do my little talk later on. Um, excuse the roughness. I have a story I need to share with you guys about persevering. But I'll do that at the end. So I finished doing the toilets. I did both toilets. Um, and I guess I'll. Guess I'll basically finish off here. Um, I'm just gonna find that story of someone. It's of a friend. Wow. The sister of a friend. Um, something I've only just caught up with recently again. Um, I suppose I'll give you an update of what's happening here. Um, no haircut. Haven't shaved for a couple of weeks. My wife wanted to see what it looked like with the beard and moustache, as you can see, not that good, I mean around here, pretty good, around here, okay. Um, but we are now at level 2, restaurants, supermarkets, um, bars, movie theatres are all open again, still social distancing, so 2 metres still, um, and there's a register at retail stores and all that. So this story I'm going to read is from 
Nidia Prindergast. Um, my friend's name is Nathan. This is basically being successful. Um, for those that want to be successful, this is something you can learn upon. But I'm also looking at it as not just being successful, but a way to overcome things. Like, I mean, there is times where things can be hard. If you use this, this will be able to help you through that, hopefully. Um, take this as inspirational. So, being successful is going through from going through school from the age of five years old, being bullied const constant, non-stop by students and teachers until I was 18 years old. When I finished school, in those years I was still achieving achieved playing violin for 12 years, got a scholarship at the age of 13 into one of the highest private music and arts schools, got to play piano for 5-6 years and tour in a symphony orchestra and played the youngest age of 18 of age in the Sydney Opera House to a world, con to a world concert. Had a beautiful daughter at 20 years of age and still got mentally abused by an ex-husband and ex-partners after that. One thing I had learned is never give up and just work hard and I became one of the top saleswomen in my company for my job. It made redundant after four and a half years when the company in in the company and got my current role and I smashed it in this job and I guess what I'm thirty years old own an Audi go to Vienna's for my confidence to smile again and nearly smashed out of smashed out my next goal. Anything is possible if you put your mind to it. Even being smashed down by everyone around you, even in my jobs, there's bullying. Learn to have a hard heart and you'll still be here like me, achieving what you want. Learn to love yourself and your own company. Key to the happiness. So, basically with that saying, have a hard heart. That's what I basically have been in my life as well. I mean, when you do, when you have been bullied and abused and all that, you kind of enter a dark space. But I suppose if you can get through it, you come out as a different person. You do have a hard heart. You do hard at find to trust people. But when you find that someone that you, that you trust, you give your all in it. Give your all in that relationship. Don't hold back. Um, be vulnerable. Open yourself up again. It is hard to trust. But if you have that one person that you do trust, it will be much better for you to be able to open up, have that confidence to carry on and help them, get them to help you through what you've been through as well. It's also communication is good. Um, yeah, anything can help you through. So that's just helps you in a way, maybe keep that in the back of my mind, like, hey, if she can be abused for most of her life, verbally, emotionally, and still achieve her goals and still smashing them, anyone can do that. It's all about one bad day doesn't make your life. Your life is made by the conquerings you have done. So I just made that up on the spot. It may not make any sense to you. I'll try and make it so it doesn't make sense. So basically one bad day doesn't make your life. Your life is determined by the goals that you've set and when you have achieved them. You can do whatever you want. Be good to people. Doesn't matter what race they are, what religion they are, what nationality they are. We're all brothers and sisters. We all should love each other. Let's not end up like what's happening in America. Let's not have that around the world. It's not good, and I mean, things keep going out of proportion. We want a world where we can have our little ones grow up safe and sound. 
The only way we can do that is by loving each other. Forgive, forget, move on. But also remember. I suppose not forget, just forgive, move on. Don't forget, remember it, but don't live on it. Don't live in the past, live in the present and in the future. The present can change to what the future is going to be. The past we cannot change. Unless you have a time machine, then I suppose you can. But people, a lot of, a lot of people like living in the past, like, oh, this happened, this happened. Get over it. My friend, you would have seen in one of my vlogs, he's gotten over what happened with the Maldives, but he still remembers it. But he's not letting it hold him back. He's now working for a Maori television station, working good job, getting good pay. He enjoys what he does. It's all up to your mind how you live things, how you want to deal with life. So just remember be good to those around you, help out when you can, be strong. Be proud. Kick out.